It's been hard, hasn't it? Let go of a prayer for you. How you doing with everything? I'm good. Just a sweet word. You know, it's okay if you're not first images and ideas for this was just music and teens you know so as this movie was really evolving for a very very long time um music was always a part of it and i was kind of building this epic playlist mm -hmm. um f it, so it's a lot of things for me one i love uh i love soundtrack soundtrack driven films um everything from days and confused to boogie nights to goodfellas um, and then another is just like at that point in my life, music, well, music's still very huge, but it was very huge in high school and I was music hungry and it got me through a lot of things. So I thought, um, for characters in high school, from their point of view, a s soundtrack and music would be a huge, um, gateway closer to their world and headspace. I just wanted to find music that felt honest to Ty and Emily. And also it's so much of the ebb and flow of the movie. And then if you separate it and put it in a playlist, uh, a story hopefully feels like is being told from track to track. Wishing you got speed, glory. There will be mountains you won't move. Frank, he's one of my favorite living artists. Uh, I'm obsessed with his music, um, especially Blonde and Endless. I think it's just a mix of uh, his masterful approach with music combined with this like authentic vulnerability all this stuff combined together to where i'm just obsessed and moved in love um so that was there there's also the hair aspect uh it was a lot of things first that just started at a base level kel and i were like you we, you gotta look different from other movies what could we do and then it was like could we dye your hair what could that be like we looked at every chris brown kanye frank like everything um and then we naturally settled on the blonde there's a moment later in the movie where we actually see the blonde al album cover mm -hmm. on a phone um and to me that's like drawing this memory of ty uh and then it and then it it's right after a very huge scene and it's also there's something about that cover with his hand above his face and the green hair it's almost like he tried to dye his hair blonde and it went green and it like speaks to just the the real vulnerability in that album Animal Collective also, it, you know, this is a very personal movie as well and inspired by stuff with my girlfriend and I and Animal Collective's a band we bonded over and like kind of discovered and loved earlier on. Um, and there was that link. Floridada specifically, I believe they're referencing like dadism and art and interconnectivity and like that all connects to like subtler themes of this movie as well, I think. <laughs> Tyler has a has a cool taste in music. It's everything from hip hop to Animal Collective, and it's stuff em I think Emily would hear uh, through that hallway, through closed doors, and everything. And between Floridada fitting fitting um, that part of the movie, between Bluish fitting uh, is the sort of spark of this like new love uh, in Lock Raven. Um, uh, that song to me is just. Uh, I don't know, it's like, it's, it feels like healing and love bubbling out. Lord, what a difference a day makes. It, it was funny because I heard that song when I was younger and I hadn't heard it in a very long time. And I remember first time I saw Chunking Express, hearing it in that and that really emotionally resonating with me. And also like being a huge, I think the structure of that movie being a huge inspiration for the structure of this. Uh, so like a subtle homage there is literally in the lyrics. This movie's all about uh, the difference a day can make, the difference a decision can make, the difference uh, the most drastic mistake of your life can make and connecting that to the characters, but also, you know, I think this movie is also not just the kids. It's also the parents and this connection between generations. Um, and uh, so the idea of like this timeless song that could connect the generations in this movie was really exciting. Another beautiful thing that happened. Um, I remember, you know, there's that scene early on when uh, mom's kind of singing the song with Kel in the car. And uh, we had a lot of fun shooting that. Um, and Kel said it reminded him of like his mom used to sing him stuff. And then he was with his mom one day and he said, and that song was playing and he was like, whoa, that's so weird. This song's in the movie. She says, you don't remember? I used to sing this song to you. Uh, so it very much, all that combined, it felt uh, spiritually meant to be for, for that track. I am a God. This stuff I think has to just start with 
some some like base level real connection with the characters. So I, uh, with what Ty is going through in that moment, I am a god is the kind of song he'd be blasting in his truck. As adolescent as that as that is, you know, in that in what's going on and how severe and everything is amped up, like that's the kind of song when I was going to those places uh, in that emotional head state at that age that I would be blasting. There's a lot going on with Kanye and his persona. One thing you can't say is he's uh, uh, a range of a person and uh, wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, uh, has all different kind of aspects, you know, going on with him. And I think everything from like what he talks about with mental health um, and uh, his bipolar and it too like spiritually with some of his music like Life of Pablo as well like for me that album plays like uh, like it plays like a man at war with himself there's beautiful gospel to the most crass like Jesus stuff um, uh, combined in this messy back and forth that I love that also feels just like raw life and feels like um, uh, a person at a hard place baby can you focus when Calvin and Alexa were first hanging out in real life, he took this video of her uh, dancing to uh, Focus, and it was so, so gorgeous and beautiful that we actually used it in a deleted scene in the movie where, uh, you know, when they're in a bit of a fallout, he's alone in his room watching this video and then tries to make up with her. So then that led me to using that song in the text scene. Um, and it, you know... <laughs> It was, it felt too right, like too meant to be and too perfect. And, and just like, especially for that scene, it's, it was trying to convey what it feels like to have a text fight. You know, Alexa, her only voice in that scene, since we're only with Tyler and his phone, is through her messages. But also it feels like her spirit is coming through that song. So that felt really important to me. And it's like those tracks are in dialogue with each other. I fucking hate you, but I love you. When Tyler comes over, it's uh, definitely not Alexa's spirit there. It's uh, it's Ty acting out. I fucking hate you is uh, I just love that Tyler track. It's it's also like Tyler has these beautiful they're love songs. That's a love song. I fucking hate you, but I love you like that speaks to the frustration of love. And it speaks to relationships at times, which I think is a lot of what's happening with Ty and Lex's relationship. You can love this person so much but y'all can b bring each other down. You can drive each other crazy. And um, uh, that track to me is just, it's so simple, but so powerful. And how Tyler plays with that, um, it, felt, uh, it felt emotionally right. Radiohead's one of my favorite bands. Um, t for a sort of soundtrack driven film, for them to they don't technically have the last word. There's a song after them, but it is the last kind of um, emotional wrap up. I think it speaks to themes in the movie. You know, I think it speaks to what the movie's about um, without being too on the nose. Um, but it's just such a emotionally beautiful, like waiting forever for that track and then to get that rendition of it with the piano was just so, the first time I heard it, I just started crying. I remember I was actually, I was in LA. I'm never in LA. I was in LA to meet Joel Edgerton uh, for It Comes at Night and everything. And I was really nervous. Uh, and then that album had come out and I was, I heard that song for the first time and I was just crying. And then I kept it on repeat and like walked around LA. Lord knows I've held on to way too much hate in my life. But all we have is love. I mean, I was terrified when I sent the script to Trent Atticus because it was like almost 40 songs in it and I, and none of them were Nine Inch Nails or their stuff, but they they loved it and they were like, how does score fit into this? They were excited by that challenge. And um, I think what we settled on was as much as I hope the score, feel, or, sorry, the soundtrack feels like the world and still bringing you closer to Ty and Emily's experience, the score is actually the internal spirit of them coming out, if that makes sense, in linking them. I think we they lay in themes that happen, that start with Ty, that take over with Emily. And it's this connection where between that score, between the colors at certain moments, this sibling connection, they rarely share time in the film, but together. But um, the sibling link is an undying one. It's a huge one for this. So it, it is that connection. And the score is almost like their spirit and their subconscious coming out sonically. And they would take sounds from the movie and manipulate them and use them musically. Um, even to like the piano theme that we get is inspired by Tyler's moment with the piano. And uh, 
yeah, it, it was a really huge necessary thing, I think, that also links the two halves in a way soundtrack can't. What a difference. And the difference is you.